What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Tropical Storm Idelia has been rapidly organizing and rapidly intensifying since last night. Currently, it has winds of 65 miles per hour, as well as a pressure of 990 millibars. It's a very low pressure for a 65 mile per hour tropical storm. So we'll, we'll, we'll go over all that in just a second, but here's the public advisory, 65 miles an hour. Tropical storm force winds now extend at 105 miles from the center, which before it was 70, now it's 105, and the estimated central pressure is 990 millibars. The forecast advisory calls for this thing to be a Category 3 hurricane with winds of at least 115 miles per hour at landfall near the Big Bend of Florida. And as you can take a look at the cone over here, there are now hurricane warnings issued from App the Apalachicola Bay all the way to the through the through Sarasota over here. So this is a very serious situation we have going on. Hurricane warnings are also in effect for parts of Cuba right here. And based off what I'm looking at the cone, the tropical storm force winds look do look a lot better organized than they were at this at this point yesterday. So we'll have to continue to monitor it as time continues to go on. Tropical storm warnings are in effect from the from the western part of Apalachicola Bay all the way to Collier County, Florida, and for parts of the Yucatan Peninsula and the uh, and this island in Cuba over here, T tropical storm watches are now in effect for the coast of Georgia and through for much much of the Space Coast in Florida over here. So we'll have to take this very very seriously. And based off of what I've been looking at, this is expected to continue to rapidly intensify as it enters the Gulf of Mexico. First of all, it's going to be entering a thing that's known as the loop current, which basically has insanely warm waters. We can go ahead and show you that insanely warm waters at 30 plus degrees Celsius right now over the loop current. And it's also going to be entering an area of ocean heat content of at least 150 OHC. And it's going to stay on there for at least 24 hours as it approaches Florida over here. It is currently in the Caribbean Sea in that 150 to 175 plus ocean heat content. And it took full advantage of it last night. At, 7, at 4 p.m. yesterday, it was at 40 miles an hour. 7 p.m. it went up to 45. 10 p.m. it went up to 60. And then it went up to 65 earlier this morning. Pressure's been plummeting. Uh, Hurricane Hunter Reconnaissance actually went in there earlier and they found a pressure of 983 millibars based on extrapolated pressure over here. And we'll have to continue to monitor those systems right here as time continues to go on. We have two Hurricane Hunter aircraft that are currently in the storm right now. So we'll have to pay attention to it very closely as time continues to go on. We have dropsins going in left and right. So we'll have to continue to uh, keep an eye on it for sure. So that's what we have going on right here. Another thing that we need to really discuss is basically the wind shear in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. This, there was a huge question whether the wind shear was going to uh, prevent it from intensifying that much or not, and that was an initial, uh, basically an initial question we had. Well, this is where we were at nine hours ago. We were looking at around 40 knots of wind shear in some areas, generally around 30 to 40 knots across where the system was going. Six, uh, three hours later the shear weakens considerably down to 30 to 40 knots in a somewhat isolated area. Three hours ago, wind shear is down to 30 knots in an isolated area, 25 knots as well. And now, boom, the wind shear over the last especially three hours has collapsed, and it's continuing to collapse as the system moves through, which means that if we're, get, if we're looking at this right, we could be seeing an area where we're only up to like 15 to 20 knots of wind shear at most. And that's going to be that in combination with the OHC. That's why this thing is expected to rapidly intensify even further. So this is something we need to continue to take very, very seriously. And this isn't just going to be a threat to the Florida Peninsula or the Florida Panhandle or the Big Bend. It's going to push inland into, into southern Georgia, and the Carolinas are also going to get impacted based off of what we're seeing from the cone. Although we are expecting around strong tropical storm strength by the time it gets to Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina over here. So I would not be surprised if states of emergency go up, especially in Georgia and South Carolina, as this thing could t potentially get stronger than the NHC is initially anticipating. They always tend to underestimate systems like this. And this isn't the only system they underestimated. Another system that kind of caught us off guard was Hurricane Franklin over here. 
This now has winds of 145 miles per hour. Six hours ago, it was at 115. Pressure's down to 937 millibars. It's moving north at nine miles an hour. And the NHC is forecasting this to get up to at least a 155 mile per hour category four hurricane before it moves into unfavorable conditions. If we go ahead and show you that on sat if we go ahead and show you that on satellite over here, it looks beautiful on satellite. It looks it looks incredibly impressive. Reminds me of Hurricane Sam back in 2021, but yeah, look at uh, look at how impressive that structure is. It's moving through 29, 28 plus degrees Celsius or 82 to 84 plus degree Fahrenheit waters right now through decently low wind shear. So it definitely has a lot of room to really grow and intensify even further. So I've been talking to some people on Storms United. We're not sure if it's if it's going to get up to high end category four, maybe even low end category five. Certainly a possibility right now, but. Base, but it's, I'm not. But at this time, it's too early to really say. We're basically in uncharted territory, and that's why I'm so hesitant on basically saying, "Oh, this is going to be a Cat Five," because we don't know uh, too much. I've see, definitely seen Cat Fives pop up in unexpected areas, but right now, it's just too early for me to say whether it's going to be or not. Last thing we're going to go ahead and show you is we're going to go ahead and show you some model runs that have been coming up. We're going to start with the HMON, go on to the H Wharf and the HAFS runs for uh, for Tropical Storm Idalia. Idalia is expected to organize and strengthen, rapidly intensify in the Gulf of Mexico. It, in the HMON, it is expected to make landfall near Apalachicola Bay, is around a Category Three hurricane. We're not. Uh, we'll have to wait. We'll have to go ahead and see what those winds are. Right here, the winds are definitely uh, winds are definitely over 100 knots, around 120 miles per uh, per hour. We're not 100 percent sure. Uh, for, well, we'll have to keep an eye on it for sure uh, as time continues to go on. Makes landfall, crosses through Georgia, and then into the Carol uh, into the Carolinas, potentially uh, causing a lot of flooding if it moves inland, like the HMON is calling for. So we'll have to monitor that as time continues to go on for sure. Next one we're going to go ahead and show you is the HAFSA run. HAFSA has this thing organizing and rapidly intensifying once again, although it has it moving further to the east. Potentially Tampa could see some tropical storm to hurricane force winds. Makes landfalls a 947 millibar system. If we go ahead and show you this uh, graph right here, makes land uh, makes landfall as around uh, either a mid to high range category three, maybe low end category four, according to the HAFSA. Moves over Georgia, South Carolina, kind of uh, meanders off the coast and potentially causes some storm surge in the Outer Banks and will uh, the coast of North Carolina over here. Definitely something we need to monitor as this is going to have f uh, impacts far inland from Florida into Georgia and the Carolinas, especially HAFSB run. Here's what we have going on. Rapidly intensifying as as soon as it, cr uh, it crosses Cuba, enters the Gulf of Mexico, makes landfall in the Big Bend, around a 940s range uh, hurricane as we go further into this. So definitely something to take seriously. It moves further inland, kind of similar to HAFSA. It kind of moves off the coast of the South Carolina, potentially causes some uh, flooding, some wi uh, tropical storm force winds in North Carolina as well. So we'll have to continue to monitor that for sure. And the last one we're showing you is the H Wharf of course, and the H wharf similar situation. All these models are having this rapidly intensify once this gets th there, and the H wharf is going off on a limb right here. This is a 934 millibar system, which that's a, like, already that's around a category that's category four strength if that holds. It's expected to make landfall. In the uh, in the western part of the Big Bend right here, moves inland in Georgia and and then in the Carolinas, ca potentially cause a lot of flooding in Appalachia if that holds. So we'll have to continue to monitor that as time continues to go on. We're going to be going live for about an hour this afternoon, around 4:15 p.m. Eastern time, so, and so that way we can answer any questions you guys have and look at the latest advisory. But with that being said, we're closing the video right here. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Helps us out. Helps us make more videos like these but with that being said have a wonderful day guys stay safe